All right. Oh, that, was, that was a little bit loud. Too loud for the morning? Too loud for the morning. It's morning here in America. A crack of 8.32, 8.33 a.m. It just rolled over. Well, I'm burning the midnight oil over here in Asia. God. But welcome back to Bench Stash, guys. We have another mock draft episode right as Leo is about to make his pick. So why don't you make your pick, and then I'll explain exactly what we're doing. Keep it exciting for you guys. Man, who would I possibly pick? I mean, the fact that I have a receiver queued up kind of shows him that. Going robust RB. But I'll make my pick. Ant-Man Brown. Spoiler alert. Go ahead and go ahead and explain. Go ahead and explain. Even though they've already read the title and kind of know what's going on. <laughs> so what we're going to do, similar to our last mock where we did late round QB versus early round QB, we are going to do a zero strategy face-off where Leo will be drafting zero running back and I will be drafting robust running back. We'll take a look at our lineups and see who will be winning the fantasy championship, essentially. And we'll talk about some news throughout the mock as well. A lot of stuff is happening throughout the fantasy landscape, including Teddy Bridgewater's knee just exploding like the Septa Baylor to bring that <laughs> to bring that reference back. Basically, yeah, all the reports were that it was this like gruesome scene that players were like throwing up because it was this incredibly disgusting thing, um, which you don't really hear that often. But then it turned out to basically just be like a torn ACL and dislocated knee, which doesn't sound as bad as it would sound like it could have been. I wasn't even sure to what it was going to be when it was getting that kind of Yeah, review. like career possible, career threatening injury. Yeah, but now it sounds like it's just kind of your run of the mill out for a season deal. Wow. All right. So I am drafting robust running back. And let's see here. So far, there have been three running backs off the board, Gurley, Peterson, and Lev Bell. So that leaves me with... Zeke, not going to happen. <laughs> uh, David Johnson, also probably not going to happen to a lot of people's dismay. I will be taking Lamarzard Miller. Lamar Miller. Yeah, I think he is poised to explode this year, a la Teddy Bridgewater's knee to keep that going. <laughs> is, <laughs> is, really it a little bit too early? <laughs> is, is it really Is it too early to drop that reference? All right. So Lamar Miller... Um, he basically joined Houston because he wanted more carries, and he's going to get the carries this year. Houston's been in the top five each of the last two years in rushing attempts. So Lamar Miller is pretty solid. Uh, a lot of people argue that he never got the carries because the coaches saw something in his build that maybe he wasn't you know, built for that type of role, but I don't think that's the case. I think Miami had a really terrible coaching staff the past couple of years, and Lamar Miller is going to eat. Yeah, he's looked, besides the last preseason game, he's looked very good. Um, I'm, he still I'm scored sad. a touchdown. He did, yeah. I'm sorry I don't yeah. own any shares of him this year. Somehow all the drafts went by and I didn't get a single Lamar Miller share. It's just yeah. a tragedy, a Greek tragedy, as they might say. You don't have any Lamar Miller? No. no. Oh, I, I guess you don't, right? Yeah. No, 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 we do. And our bench staff... Uh, Oh, right. Fancy yeah, the FFPC. Players Championship. I forgot about that. Okay, yeah. good, good. So I do have a Lamar Miller share. That's good news. I was I was bummed about that because, yeah, I'm with you. I think he's going to explode. I'll even say hot take, top RB in fantasy, end of the year. Boom. Ow, there it is. Bench dash approved. Yeah. Oh, man, David Johnson sliding. That's a, yeah, that's a slide. Slip and slide. There was kind of from a, You kind of got in the middle of the running back run, apparently. Man, Mike Evans yeah. shooting up to the seventh pick after his preseason game. But last but week. look at the, look at the team that drafted him, Bucks. Bucks. All right. Well, I might have yeah. that a little bit. <laughs> he did look really good though. It was like vintage Mike Evans his rookie year, except now he's the number one target instead of behind an aging Vincent Jackson. V Jackson. Yeah, I don't think there's any way he only scores three touchdowns again. But seventh no. overall, that's a tad bit it's high. A, you're you're in on Mike Evans if you're taking him. Yeah. There. All right, let's see. It's who's going to make it back to you. So I have one Lamar Miller. I am drafting robust running back, so obviously I will be taking a running back. Names I'm looking at currently, Jamal about that base. Don't get snaked. Come on. <laughs> uh, Eddie Lacy, LaShawn McCoy, Mark Ingram, Doug Martin, probably. Yeah. Devonta Freeman. Uh, I keep on going up and down on Freeman. 
I was really low on him, but then watching him in the preseason, he looked like the clear lead dog there, and it yeah. didn't even look like Tevin is going to threaten any of his his reps or his carries, touches, no. whatever you have. Oh, sh- I'm on the clock, and Jamal Charles just got snaked. There goes your Jamal. So now I'm in this weird spot where I have to choose between Eddie Lacy, LaShawn McCoy, Mark Ingram. I am going to go ahead and take LaShawn McCoy. It's a good pick. It's a good pick. Strong pick. It was close uh, between McCoy and Lacy. I do think Lacy's going to bounce back. But I like McCoy in a rushing offense in Buffalo. I mean, they are geared towards the run. And he basically has nobody behind him. We saw last year when he was healthy, he was really, really consistent. That is always the question with LaShawn McCoy, though. Is he ever going to be healthy for a full 16-game slate? Uh, I hope this is the year because I think he has the talent to be a top-five running back. He'll get the touches. Uh, I mean, he's the focal point of their rushing attack. So, LaShawn McCoy, I like him in the second round. And because I won't be picking for a while, I had to take him in the early second round. He's, he wasn't going to make it back to me in the third round. So, I kind of had to plant my flag mm-hmm. in LaShawn McCoy. That is not, that doesn't sound good at all. But <laughs> let's just move on from that. Yeah. And, I mean, uh, at a certain point, you just have to disregard ADP and say, you know what? This is the guy I want. I don't think he's making it to me. So, I'm just going to take him. Uh, and I'm with you with McCoy. Yeah, I mean, he's shown he can be the top running back in fantasy when he plays the full season. Um, I don't think he'll do that this year if he plays the full season. I think he's still, you know, the lower end of top five. But still, that's nothing to sneeze at, top five running Locked back. Locked and loaded RB1. Yeah, basically. Even even if he doesn't, didn't he play 12 games last year and he still finishes on RB1? So yeah. you just really just have to find a way to insulate yourself. All right. Gets back around to me. Wow, Des Bryant plummets to the end of the second. Um, which is going to be an easy pick for me. He'll definitely be one of my picks. Um, I guess if you want to, you can be a little worried about Dak. Um, you know, he's a rookie. Who really knows what's going to happen when the when the bullets go live? But you know, it's he's. I can't imagine he's going to be as bad as Brandon Whedon was last year. Like, I just don't think. I don't think that's that's yeah. going to happen. So I think Des will be okay still. Um, let me make this pick before I pull a Derek and just auto draft someone. Arian um, Foster. <laughs> for the, Aaron Foster. End of the second, second round. Yeah. Um, I need to take another wide receiver here. Um, oh, man. This is tough. I think because I have a like, super safe Antonio Brown and Dez, who I think I still feel good about, um, I'm going to take Alshon with my third oh, wide receiver there we go. pick. Um, Alshonius. I was also considering, you know, Amari Cooper and um, Sammy were kind of the two other names jumping out at me or reach a little bit and take Demarius if I think he's going to bounce back this year. Let me lock in this Alshon pick. But, um, you know, Alshon, if he plays a full season, he'll get so many targets. And he is one of those freak athletes again. So he he has top five wide receiver in his range of outcomes. Um, sort of go back to the Dez thing a little bit. Though really, I think the only concern with Dez is because he sort of makes most of his money in the red zone is can the Cowboys move the ball enough to get into the red zone? Um and I guess I'm betting yes. But at the end of the second, it's sort of it's worth the risk at that point. Yeah, at the two three turn, I mean, for Des Bryant, yeah. That is a steal. And look at I mean the top three wide receivers that you have, Brown, Bryant, and Alshon. I mean, that could if they perform, I mean you've basically locked up the championship already with that well, wide yeah. receiving course. So have to cobble together. Order Dem Rings. Order, order Dem Rings. <laughs> order Dem Rings, though. It's a uh, screaming hot value, as you might say. Screaming hot value. Yep. And I'm about to grab, oh, Latavius. Oh, oh, man, you thought he'd make it, it to you. Breaks my heart. It just breaks my heart. Breaks, breaks, your, break, break your heart. Mmm, let's see. Oh, man. It gets kind of ugly after robust, that. Yeah. <laughs> this robust draft strategy is really going to make me choose between DeMarco Murray, Jeremy Hill, Thomas Rawls, uh, maybe a Jonathan Stewart in the third. Oh, man, you got some decisions to be making. All right. Hopefully the next two guys just go wide receiver. And they did. Okay. So Lamar Miller, LaShawn McCoy, I need a third running back. And even though his ADP is in the early fourth, I'm just going to go ahead and grab DeMarco Murray of the 
Tennessee Titans, who has been rising on my board a little bit. I've watched him play in the preseason, as I'm sure most of you have as well. And he looks vintage. Yeah. I mean, he's making the cuts. He has a vision. He's hitting the hole hard. And he is not running out of the shotgun every single play like he was last season in Philadelphia. And I think that has made all the difference. And DeMarco Murray should return to RB1 status this season because Tennessee is just going to pound the ball on the ground. Yeah. I mean, really, that's their whole MO on offense right now. They don't really have a strong passing attack other than Delaney Walker. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so You're it's going to be DeMarco Murray and Derek on rye, as I say. Yeah, I think... I, yeah, I think they're going to be so run heavy. There's enough for both of them. Um, you, I think Henry could still get 10 to 15 touches and leave, you know, close to 20 touches for DeMarco. They're just going to, I think that's part of the reason why they drafted him. It wasn't to have DeMarco lose his job halfway through the season. It was to be able to have a super run heavy tandem. Yeah, definitely. And uh, DeMarco is clearly the lead back there. Yeah. I mean, when the, the first team offense was on the field, it was pretty much all DeMarco. And it's back to me. Let's see. No running back was taken in between. So I basically have exactly the same pool that I was looking at in my previous pick. Oof. Let's see. Thomas Rawls, but he's got that hype train sneaking up behind him. <laughs> Jeremy Hill, Matt Forte, Jeremy Langford, Melvin Gordon, who's been rising on my board as well. Yeah. But I'm going to have to just go ahead and make a pick here. I'm going to take... Another bounce back candidate, similar to DeMarco Murray, won Jeremy Hill in the top of the fourth. Uh, in the last preseason game, he basically dominated the first and second down touches over Geo. Geo looked good. Mm -hmm. I will admit that. But when they got into the red zone, Jeremy Hill outsnapped Geo 8 to 2. So he is the first and second down back. He is the red zone back. And I think in the top of the fourth, he has high bounce back potential and even if he isn't an RB1 it's the fourth round so as long as I get some value out of him I'm not too worried here and he has the potential to be an RB1 which I like yeah I mean he's done it before um he has and I, I like all the reports I'm hearing about him being primed to bounce back looking vintage you know getting all the the work again probably not yeah. as much of a split um I like it. I like the pick. Uh, I will say with Rawls, um, I would have gone Hill over Rawls too, but I will say that while it probably starts as a split with C. Mike and Rawls, Rawls probably asserts himself within a couple games and sort of runs with the job again. Uh, I think the silver lining with C. Mike is that now there is like a clear handcuff, whereas before it would have been a committee if Rawls went down. I think it's now it will be C. Mike's job if Rawls goes down, which he has shown to be a little, little you know, injury concern. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that, I mean, it's tough. The preseason has kind of shaped my opinion of Thomas Rawls, which is unfortunate because yeah, he hasn't played he hasn't at all. Played, yeah. We've, we've just we've yeah. just seen Kristen Michael come and uh, dominate, which has happened before. So I feel like you know this is like Groundhog's Day, and I'm gonna yeah. watch the same crash and burn happen again once the regular season starts. But uh, I like Jeremy Hill over Thomas oh, Rawls yeah. there. I'm with you I on think that. One, one Cincy beat writer said that uh, Jeremy Hill is poised to have a monster season. Mm -hmm. so, superlatives. Uh, superlative, but go ahead, yeah. you're on the clock. Okay, it's up to me. I was really hoping Moncrief would make it to me, uh, but he did not. So, looking at the wide receiver pool, um, I like Doug Baldwin. Uh, Edelman is interesting. I'm kind of worried about his first four games just being duds, though, which makes him a nice like buy low candidate come <laughs> Brady's yep. return. Um, Marvin Jones is someone of mine because I don't think he'd be there at the end of the sixth. Marvin might. Jones in the fourth. I mean, I'm that really thinking be... about this turn. I'm going to take Buck, Doug Baldwin yeah. with the first one because um, I really liked what I saw out of the preseason that he is like the clear one there getting a ton of yep. targets. Um, so, yeah, I think he he's sort of a high floor guy to pair with um, a little bit of the risk in Alshon, and I guess Dez. Um, are, are you going full five wide receivers? Here? I am. I'm going full okay. full zero is... RB, yeah, just to, like, really lean into it. Um, at this point, man, I think it really is between Marvin Jones and Julian Edelman for me at this spot. Do I want to hold Edelman for four games? Basically, I wouldn't be using him until he gets back. But, nah. 
I'm gonna jump on the Marvin Jones hype train. <laughs> beginning of the fifth. Top of the fifth. Play my okay, flag. He's no Marvin longer Jones. Marvin Jones. He's motherfucker Jones. Motherfucker top. Jones. In the uh, top of the fifth. Yeah, I mean it's. I'm not the only one to to say the hype stuff about him. It's sort of a 1A, 1B situation. Um, if the Lions passing offense could be even a little bit competent, he'll see a ton of targets. Him and Tate have completely different roles, so it's not like they're going to cannibalize each other. Um, yeah. So, I, yeah, I think Marvin Jones is my fifth wide receiver. Is a, It's a nice sort of, I guess, mid-round dart throw at that point just to see, hey, maybe he turns into a wide receiver one. Who knows? I, th- I think I'm gonna have nightmares now of Golden Tate and Marvin Jones cannibalizing each other. <laughs> like <laughs> actually, like oh god, yeah. what are they doing? Traumatized. <laughs> oh, my fat Jerry Langford got oh, taken. That would have been good. I mean, if you're diving in with five wide receivers, I'm gonna dive in with uh, five running backs here. Yeah, do it. Go full, full robust. Full robust. Here it is. Let's see who is even on the board. Well, there's one Arian Foster that, and he could be the perfect fifth running back here. Low risk at that point, but extremely high reward. But there's also Ryan Matthews, Matt Jones. So I'm gonna get one of these guys, or possibly a Chris Ivory. Be a little bit early for Ivory, but yeah, again, it's gonna be my fifth running back at this point. So yeah, if you think if he's one of your guys, then one of my guys. I, I think at this point it'll be Ryan Matthews, unless. Mm. He gets taken here. <laughs> he gets taken by this guy he's, who just heard you. He's probably going to yeah. go wide receiver. He's listening. Yeah, he's a Bench Dash fan. 17. I see you. I see you, 17. <laughs> I know you watch all our videos. Of course. <laughs> all right, let's see. He's going to time out here and probably take my Ryan Matthews. Oh, Duke, oh, wow. Duke Johnson. <laughs> that was a panic That's take, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right, well, my decision is already made. and Now I can start looking in a different tab here on Fantasy Football Calculator. I've been locked in the uh, RB tab for a while, so I'm going <laughs> to shift over to the, the, the wide receiver sector for a minute and see what is waiting for me. Well, you can make your wide receiver one. <laughs> oh, it's not pretty. Josh, Flash. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, Josh Golden Tate. Oh, man, this is ugly. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty, this is pretty ugly here for a wide receiver one. Although Smokey Brown is sitting out here and he just got cleared to play, which is big news for all the John Brown lovers out there. It's not just clearing protocol. He's actually been cleared to play in a game. Let's see here. Okay, I can't take Josh Gordon as my wide receiver one <laughs> when he's suspended for the first four games. No, that would be not. a foolish mistake. Foolish endeavor. Golden Tate is a completely unsexy wide receiver one, but, I mean, he should receive the volume to be a viable starter. Yeah. I could swing for the fences and go with somebody like uh, John Brown or I guess it would be John Brown. (laughs) I think, you know, he's kind of been the bench test poster boy this offseason, and it's got to be John Brown. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Uh, I mean, he has a concussion issue going on right now, but, you know, I'm all in. All in. Let's do it. Um, he definitely has the potential. He, he's in the offense where he could be a wide receiver one. And after starting five running backs in a row, I'm looking for players that could potentially end up in the wide receiver one category. Because basically, I have my starting running backs and my flex set. So I'm just trying to fill that wide receiver one, wide receiver two slot. So I need somebody who could potentially make the jump and be an every week starter for me. And I feel confident that John Smokey Brown is that man. Yeah, if you think he can, there's definitely an argument for him becoming the guy in Arizona with Larry Fitzgerald hitting that age wall. You know, maybe Michael Floyd was a little bit of a mirage last year. There, there's a version of this offense where John Brown becomes the one. So yeah, I don't hate and that. And it's a version we're going to see this year. <laughs> and it's going to be reality. <laughs> yeah, it's going to happen. John Brown, top five wide receiver. That's, that's a that's a hot take, man. As as I'm looking uh, at the running I mean, backs who might make it to me, uh, <laughs> it's not pretty, my lord. Uh, man, I'm hoping Matt Jones somehow slides down to me. Um, 
even though that shoulder injury is definitely a concern. I, there's just this version of the year where he never gets healthy, plays anyway, but because his shoulder's hurt, he like lacks the power to actually drive through anyone. He just averages yeah. like two yards of carry and loses the job. So that's scary. <laughs> it's scary for Matt Jones. Uh, but then there's also a version where he does get healthy. And, oh, Rashad. Um, Rashad. <laughs> and then, you know, he, he is productive. He has the talent. We've seen him flash it. Oh, Matt Jones. Oh, there right. he is. Well, this is yeah, motherfucker Jones. <laughs> <laughs> As I look at the running backs here, um, I'm just going to take the two guys I like the most out of this group. Um, oh, my God. What an ugly, what an ugly ragtag group of guys. Um, I'm going to sort of plant my flag <laughs> in a guy. Plant him. Plant it right inside of him. That, I, that I'm excited <laughs> about. That. Deep inside of his, uh, his cavities. Let's see here. Oh, jeez. The Amir Express. Um, really? I'm warming choo up to Amir choo. a little bit. Yeah, choo-choo indeed. Right. I'm warming up a little bit. Um, you know, he won't. Theo is sort of relegated to the passing down work, but he won't get any carry. So it's really, is Zach Zenner going to take the red zone and goal line work? Uh, and I guess I'm just betting right. Amir can, can keep that job, that he's not going to lose it. Because uh, if he can, then, you know, early down work, red zone work, he sort of becomes like a Jeremy Hill type in the sixth round. Um, yeah, that's true. So that's my bet. And then, man, this one's a little bit tough, but I'm going to, I think I'm going to go a little bit safety here with the Chris Ivory um, because he will get the early down and goal line work. Um, yeah. And so I'm basically just betting on his health because I think if he stays healthy for 16 games, he will have that role for 16 games. Um, and it's not the sexiest pick, but. He has a high floor, which I like. I was considering one Gio Bernard um, just to kind of swing yeah. for upside, but I kind of I got to go a little bit safe once I took Amir Express, who could just totally implode on himself. Yeah, all uh, Teddy Bridgewater's knee. Uh, Let's just keep it going. <laughs> Let's Teddy just keep Bridgewater's it going. Knee. Yeah. Sorry, Teddy. I love you. <laughs> all right. Oh, there's somebody uh, making comments here. For, for RB dot dot dot. <laughs> uh, I guess he's. I guess he's not a fan of my robust running back draft strategy. I have no, no idea why. Not. Um, yeah, you're going with the the unsexy strategy. He isn't talking shit about my my five wide receivers in a row for some reason. No, because it's in fashion. It Zero is. running back is in fashion, but robust is like the bastard stepchild of fantasy draft strategies especially since the the main proponent of it basically denounced it whenever it was a few weeks ago he's like never yeah, mind I know. screw robust it's dead because of this one draft i saw where it didn't yeah. work out i was just trying to be contrarian <laughs> before but now i'm i'm out sorry yeah. <laughs> sorry guys it's, it's a bad idea forget it it would have been better if he like came out after so many players had drafted yeah. And done the robot. Sorry, guys. After I drafted all my teams, I realized it's not the way to go. <laughs> this this just, isn't good. No, don't do it. Oh, you already did? Uh, well, hey, there's next year. <laughs> hey, good luck. All right. So, five running backs. I have my high upside in John Brown. We are in the late seventh. I'm going to go ahead and plant my flag in one. Wait for it. Wait for it. I already know who you're going to pick. This is so anticlimactic. Michael Crabtree. Sure. Oh, dang. I thought you were going to oh. pick Jordan Matthews. You did surprise me. I did. Uh, Michael Crabtree. I think it's basically a 1A, 1B situation in Oakland, and you look at where Amari Cooper goes in the drafts, second or third round. In this particular mock, he went 3-5, uh, so fifth pick of the third round. And where Michael Crabtree's ADP is, which is in the middle of the eighth. So I reached a little bit for him, but I wasn't sure if he was going to make it back to me. So I definitely wanted to grab Michael Crabtree. Uh, I've watched all the Raiders preseason games, and the chemistry is real between Crabtree and Carr. And the stats, a lot of people don't realize that Michael Crabtree was uh, top 10 in targets last season. Finished as a wide receiver two, clear wide receiver two. Had nine touchdowns. I mean, this is a guy who was targeted almost 150 times last season. And his ADP is in the middle of the eighth round. So I'm going to go ahead and grab him as a wide receiver, too. I think Michael Crabtree is a legitimate wide receiver, too. Somebody you can plug into your lineup. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any way he does not outperform his ADP. And before I just, you know, keep on going with my Crabtree <laughs> love, I should probably look at the board here. Man, Manny Sanders... 
He's touchdown still there. Trevor is just blowing his ADP <laughs> up. Yeah. But you know who else is still here. Oh, I already know who you're going to take. I've already queued him up on the video just so I can be right. <laughs> just because I've been talking about him so much? Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to go that way, though. I have to look for upside here. Mm. Mm, but there's not a lot of upside left on the board. <laughs> no, not once you get into Jeez. the eighth round. I'm going to do it just because. This is... It's like the uh, safe uh, wide receiver two and wide receiver three combo here with one. Oh, did I pick him? What's going on here? Oh, my. Don't not a draft. Did I get him? <laughs> I oh, got there him. It is. Okay. One Stefan Diggs. <laughs> uh, now, this is probably not the best example, but I think what you're going to see happen now that Teddy has injured himself. We haven't mentioned this at all so far in this mock draft, but yeah, Teddy Bridgewater has oh, he hurt. Got hurt? His... Oh, I didn't know about that. Yeah, <laughs> He'll be out for the season. Uh, you're you're going to see Stefan Diggs. His ADP is probably going to drop a little bit. And I took him right about where his ADP is slightly earlier. He goes in about the middle of the eighth round. Uh, and if you watch the last preseason game with Teddy Bridgewater, so I guess it's... Uh, Probably fresh in your mind, but Stefan Diggs looked amazing. He was running amazing. such crisp routes that the cornerbacks in San Diego were just nowhere near him. He was just he was streaking through open field, just the green pastures in front of him. And I don't think before you make a pick, I'll just say this one thing. I don't think the quarterback is really gonna matter mm. because with how open Stefan Diggs was because of his route tree, I probably could have completed some of the passes to him. <laughs> and he is the clear wide receiver one in Minnesota. So uh take it away. All right. Uh as we come to my pick, I'm looking at the man, it's ugly. <laughs> I'm looking at a Charles Sims, I'm looking at uh Isaiah Crowell. Um I am hey, looking that's at a Justin Forsett. Um now that Dixon is out, it kind of clears things up a little bit. Um, I am going to take Charles Sims. I got to take one of these like trendy zero RB targets. Um, yeah, you got to do it. I got to take at least one of them. Um, I'll explain that in a second once I make my second pick. Um, it's really Justin Forsett or Isaiah Crowell. I'm sort of doing the opposite of what of a lot of zero RB people is, which usually you take those third down backs and hope they t you know, win a roll. Um Instead, I'm sort of taking the early down guys that I know already have a role, and I'm going to do that again with Isaiah Crowell. Woo! Um, for the the Charleston thing, he kind of gets hyped as the top zero RB target because you know he is a clear third down back in uh, Buccaneer Town, and if Doug ever goes down, then he will be the three down back. So it's kind of if he has a role with a role to grow. Um, so I, I like him as one of the zero RB guys, but for Isaiah Crowell, you know, it's he's the early down guy, he's the the red zone and goal line back. So it's really just can the Browns be good enough to to run the ball? And I guess I'm betting they can. What I've seen out of the preseason makes me think they're not going to be so inept that they're just like they can't run the ball at all. I think they'll be able to move the ball enough to have a somewhat of a running game. It won't be all Dookie J. Uh, oh, and it's your pick. It is my pick. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> what am I looking at here for a potential wide receiver four? So Crabtree and Diggs are not really, like, sexy picks here. John Brown has that potential to blow up and be the wide receiver one, but mm -hmm. you basically know what you're going to get from Crabtree. Uh, he's going to be a solid wide receiver two, in my opinion. Diggs, oh, man, the clock is really running out on me here. Uh, I'm going to have to go ahead and... Choose. Let's see. A. Did I make oh, it? Oh man, you're about to. Oh, Corey oh, Coleman. No, no, no. Corey Coleman's. Uh, honestly, we don't know a lot about Corey Coleman. We've we've seen the practice reports, but he's only played in one preseason game, and he didn't catch a pass. I mean, he caught a pass on like a, a screen, and he looked somewhat okay, but it got called back on a penalty, so not much information there. But before he uh, tweaked his uh, hammy in the preseason, he was apparently just destroying the practice field with RG3. <laughs> we know that Flash Gordon's out for the first four weeks, so it's basically going to be Corey Coleman and Terrell Pryor. Cleveland theoretically should be trailing a lot of these games. Now, I don't think Cleveland is going to be as bad as a lot of people think, but 
Corey Coleman should see a lot of targets. He has that kind of breakaway speed, and he could just hit the 60-yard uh, bomb every game. Yeah, it's going to happen every game. Every that's, game. That's what's going to happen. If it happens every game, then he's, uh, he's going to be he's wide guaranteed, one. He's guaranteed a 60-yard <laughs> touchdown pass from RG3 every single game. Wow. No, but he is, he's my wide receiver four, and I started off five running backs. So I need somebody who has the potential to receive a lot of volume and score these uh, long touchdowns. Not that that really gives you any bonus points. It's really just it's really about the volume. Let's see who I've taken my four wide receivers now. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, take a tight end here in the tenth Ooh. because he's still floating around here. Solidify that spot and take one Zach Ertz in the tenth, which I think is a pretty good spot for Zach Ertz. Um, I don't think it's incredible value, but I do think it's good value mm -hmm. because. Really, if you look at the Philly passing attack, you have J. Matt and Ertz. Yeah, that's basically it. That's unless really you're it. really a demo Gorgon Beckham believer. I'm not. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so Ertz is a solid tenth round pick, and take it away. Uh, yeah, at this point now that I have four running backs, I'm kind of opening up to not having to hammer on it too hard. But I don't really love any of these quarterbacks left. Um, there's what do you mean? Kirk Cousins is there. <laughs> There's one wide receiver I still like um, at this spot. Oh, he'll probably be who I'd take. I think I know who it is already. Do you? Let me see. Let me take him and see what happens. Torrey Smith. Torrey Smith. With no Bruce Ellington there, his targets would just go up. Yep. So there's there's some upside there. I think I will take another running back with this pick. Um, let's see. I'm looking at DeAndre Washington. I'm looking at Devonta Booker. I'm looking at a Theo Riddick looking down there staring at me. Just pair him with my Amir. You're, you're, you're literally looking at these guys right now, and they're looking back. They're, look, they're looking back at me. <laughs> staring deep into your soul, telling you, Pick Deep me. into my soul. Uh, I'm going to take DeAndre Washington. Oh, D-Dub? D-Dub. This is like an upside dart throw as my fifth running back. If he can, if he can wrestle a role in that offense, then uh, he could be quite productive. Yeah, I like DeAndre, and if you guys uh, haven't seen any of the footage from the last preseason game against Tennessee, watch the clip where he gets blown up. Uh, probably one of the hardest preseason hits, and the ball popped out, scored it out, and uh, got returned for a touchdown. But, uh, <laughs> you know, what you can take away from that is that he was right. He got back up and uh, was out there the next <laughs> series and looked fine. So he can take a hit. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take my one of my favorite late-round quarterback targets. I'm going to have to take him a little bit early. I have seen him drop to the 12th, but I'm going to take one Maddie staff mm. infection here in the back of the 11th. I mean, that's pretty late for a starting quarterback. Uh, Matthew Stafford, I mean, I think with uh, the Coots in Detroit, they're going to run a uh, high octane. It's going to be fast. They're going to be in and out of the huddle or just straight no huddle. Uh, and he's going to be zipping the ball around. He's not going to be forced to throw the ball deep down the field, like a la when he had Calvin Johnson, mm -hmm. but he'll kind of just pick defenses apart with these short little, I guess, middle range passes to, yeah. to Tate, and then Marvin Jones presents a little bit of a deep threat, so, I mean, he does have that, but I like Matthew Stafford. And now I have my tight end, I have my quarterback, I have my five running backs and four wide receivers, so I'm probably going to go ahead and try to grab another high upside wide receiver here. Somebody that could potentially break into the wide receiver one or two conversation. Ooh, I got some interesting targets. I think I know who you're going to take. I'm not going to say it, I just got to highlight it here. My hot take on who you're going to take. My hot take take. I don't know if you're gonna get this one. Oh, really? I'm kind of, th I'm kind of looking outside the box here. Not really outside the box. I'm just going for upside. Oh, do I want to do that? Forty seconds here. Do I? You know what? I'm probably gonna go with a guy who could potentially end up as a wide receiver one. Mm. You're kind of banking on an injury here, but I'm gonna draft. Mohamed Sanu. That was my that guess. You, oh, that yeah. was your guess. All right. Guess, so yeah. you look good. Now. I look yeah. good. I look so good. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's my wide receiver five. 
Uh, he probably won't be in my starting lineup, but if Juan Julio goes down, Julio, Julio, then he steps up as the wide receiver one in the greatest offense ever known. <laughs> the greatest to man. show on turf. There it is, um, Hot Atlanta. All right, it's been coming around to me. I got to take a quarterback at this point. Um, yes. Of the guys yet, it's like a pretty obvious choice who to take. Um, I mean, I could go like full upside and go for like an RG three. Yeah, just keep just wait until the fifteenth round. But I'm not gonna grab do that. Dak Prescott. No that sir. Dak Des <laughs> Dak. I'm gonna go with a, a Matt Ryan for a little bit of safety. I think he's yeah. in for a bounce back here. So I look at tight end. Um, I kind of want to take Jared Cook just to be that guy, but I'm not gonna take Dwayne Allen because he's still here at the beginning of the thirteenth round. Oof. Bruce Dwayne. Bruce Dwayne. He hasn't been like really involved during the preseason, which is sort of suppressing his value. Uh, which is a good thing, because I think yeah, once I once agree. the bullets go live, he will be <laughs> the guy. Yeah. Boom! There's another, another little catchphrase. There it is. Bullets go live. <laughs> We're coining it. Oh, it's expression. back to me already in the 13th. So this is the last pick before I am forced to take a defense and a kicker. Let's see who is left on the board. I see a Philip Dorsett. I see a Mike Wallace. I see that I have 23 seconds. <laughs> Who's left in the... Oh, a Charizard West. Oh, Spencer Ware got taken. Oh, no. It's all falling apart. <laughs> it's over. Okay, I'm going to go a, a Philip Dorsett. Again, kind of like the Sanu pick. Mm. But Philip Dorsett should actually see the field uh, a little bit more than you would expect out of a wide receiver three. Essentially, yeah. that's what he is in Indy behind uh, a T.Y. and a Moncrief. Uh, Sanu's the number two in Atlanta, so slightly different. So that's why I'll take four set, or door set around later. But an injury happens to Moncrief, to T.Y. Hilton, and Dorset steps up as a top two wide receiver in Indianapolis with a healthy Andrew Luck. And Dorsett's look good in the preseason, actually. Uh, the only concern with Indy right now is that their offensive line does not look good. No. And if Luck does, has no time to throw then I think uh, the Moncrief truthers and the TY truthers are going to be a little bit disappointed because they're expecting this major bounce back. Major bounce back. Major bounce back. That's a fair concern. Who do you think, uh, if he does turn into this short passing offense because he has no time to throw, who do you think his primary target is? Moncrief. Boom, there it is. Moncrief truthers are fine. Everyone's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or will it be one Frank Gore? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he yeah. caught he caught some passes. I, I just wanted to see year. your facial expression <laughs> like, wait, wait, on that one. You're like you're trying to process the information. <laughs> like, did I he, did did I hear that right? Did I mean, he say wait, Frank Gore? Did he say Frank Gore? When did Frank Gore get taken in this mock? Actually, in the sixth round. Okay. Yeah, that's like just a little bit too early for me. Seventh is where I'm like, I can take a Gore. All right, defense. Oh, a lot of defense has already been taken. Actually, I'm gonna take the. Uh, the New York football Jets defense here because their defensive line looked dominant in their last preseason game. Who are they playing Just week one? Dominated. Who are they playing week one? <laughs> I have to, I didn't even have time to look at that, to be honest. Doesn't Let's go matter. find out right now. <laughs> Which is what you should do when you if you're planning to stream defenses, you should look. I, I was caught unawares. Jets schedule. I feel like I know this, but I just want to double it. Oh, are they playing the Bengals? They are playing the Bengals. Oh, man. Right, you better hope At for home, bad Andy. Uh, well, it's going to happen, basically. Uh, and uh, Jeremy Hill will have fumbleitis. I'm going to take one of my favorite uh, late round. No, nah, I'm going to do something a little bit different, actually. I'm going to take right, the, the New York football Giants. It's my Ooh. defense. Because while they aren't at home, which is a bit worrisome, they are playing against Dak Prescott in his first real NFL start. Yeah, you, you were actually prepared for this. With uh, you, you, you knew who they were playing beforehand. <laughs> That's like one of the only ones I know, which is part of the reason why I was like, oh, I'll take them. <laughs> It'll make me sound good, at least. Uh, yeah, I mean, you always you, you prefer to stream a defense that's at home. Um, but I, I got to think Dak throws at least one pick in this game. And you just hope that it can get returned for a touchdown. It's really what I'm banking on when I take the Giants defense. And Adam Vinatieri, journeyman kicker. Why not? Doesn't matter. He's a kicker. Would you say that Adam Vinatieri is a goat? 
He's, he's probably the GOAT. Isn't <laughs> he like 67 and he's still playing? At least. I thought he was in his early 70s, to be honest. I think an argument could be made for he's the GOAT kicker. <laughs> he's collecting Social Security right now. And he still for sure kicking. is. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, now I have the most exciting decision to make. Which kicker will I take? One, Justin Tucker, if he makes it to me. Woo! Or one, Blair Witch Project Walsh. Blair Witch Project Walsh. Sure, that is the thing you can say. Yeah, and I just did. Come on, baby. My whole draft rides on Blair Walsh making it to me. The tension. It's palpable. Ooh, got him. He made it. You Blair Walsh. You got your kicker. Got your guy. Planting your flag on Blair Walsh. Blair oh, Walsh Mountain. Man. Blair Walsh. <laughs> okay. Huh. I was sweating there for a minute. All right. Well, looks like the uh, the zero versus zero. Zero versus draft zero. Draft is complete. And let's see how the teams look. Why don't you give me a rundown of your team here? Tell sure, me what sure. you think. So, uh, glancing at my team... Um, I think I like it. You know, it's, I am, I've been vocal about not being a big zero RB fan. Um, I'm not really a big zero anything fan, even though it's like robust RB. If you want to call it zero wide receiver, I'm still not really a fan of that either. Uh, I'm more of like a zero strategy fan. If you just go in and take the best player available, um, and, you yeah. know, to get your guys, uh, but of this team, uh, you know, this receiving group obviously is very good because of how much I hammered on wide receiver. Uh, these top three wide receivers, if they can hit their ceiling, then it's sort of, I'm, I'm already have a, at a huge advantage. Uh, and then, you know, Baldwin and Mav and Jones are nice sort of upside reserve receivers. Um, the running back core is, you know, where things get a little bit dicey. Um, playing with my flag in Amir, apparently. All in on him, bouncing back. Sixth round Amir Six, Abdullah. Sixth round Amir Abdullah. Uh, if I could take that back, maybe I'd go Geo instead. But here I am, Amir Abdullah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Geo's the more prototypical zero RB guy because you know third down back that might be able to carve out a bigger role. But I guess I'm in on Amir, sort of having a bounce back year. Ah, or I'm Amir bounce back year. That's what's Ooh, up. Poet. Dash, poet. Leo the poet Kalisi. Um, um, there it is. You know, Ivory and Crow are kind of the same guys. Those early down bangers. Um, Bangers and Mash. talked about the Bangers and Mash. Um, there it is. Tory, I was kind of starting to cool on Tory until the Bruce Ellington uh, IR move because I was like, oh, I don't know. He's really not getting targeted in preseason. And maybe, you know, none, none of the quarterbacks that play can manage to get him the ball deep, which is really what he does. Um, but now it's like he, they, got, they have to throw it to him. It's him and Vance are like yeah. the only guys there. He's going he's gonna to get a lot of <laughs> targets. How many are going to be catchable? That's hard to say. <laughs> maybe very little. But it's you know. But the if he's round. getting twenty eight targets a game, then yeah. you know he only has to catch a few of them. He only has to catch a few <laughs> of them for, for to return his tenth round value, and then you know DeAndre Washington's just the upside. Dark D dub. Throw, D dub. Um, Matt Ryan, safe quarterback that I can easily cut stream. Dwayne Allen, touchdown master. Uh, I like this team. I guess you know it's <laughs> when you're when you're going zero RB or really any of these. Basically, what you're doing is racing to win the flex spot. And then sort of punting your, you know, in this case, it's punting RB2. Um, kind of RB1 also. I'm kind of just, yeah. just punting that to really actually, I'm punting RB1. Because one of these guys will return yeah. RB2 value. Um, I'm punting the RB1 spot to win the flex spot is kind of a way to look at it. Um, which is part of the reason why I don't like it. It's like, why do that? Why is that something you got to prioritize? So, but as far as it goes, I think it's good. Tell me about your team. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. You said, ah, I like it, I guess. That's a, a screaming endorsement <laughs> of your team right there. Yeah. Uh, my team is, I kind of fall in the same boat, actually. I mean, if you look at it like, oh, I, I won the flex race. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a DeMarco Murray, a Jeremy Hill, or Ryan Matthews in the flex, which, I mean, they're solid starting running backs. Um, I mean, if you compare it to what you have, like, okay, we start Lamar, we start LaShawn in my running back one and two slots, and then the flex is probably DeMarco at this point, mm -hmm. whereas you are starting Brown, Dez, and Alshon in your flex. I probably prefer 
Actually, I don't know. <laughs> I guess they're about equal now that yeah. I look at it. I mean, I, I think Alshon is elite, and I love him as a flex wide receiver. I mean, that is fantastic. Yeah. But I also think DeMarco Murray will receive the volume in a heavy rushing offense. So, I mean, as a flex play, that's fantastic. Mm. But then you look at my wide receivers, and that's where you start to go like, oh, okay, this is why it's a bold strategy because I am banking on basically exactly what you said, but reverse. I've punted my wide receiver one. I'll probably get fair return out of a Crabtree or a John Brown to be a wide receiver two. Mm -hmm. But then I have to hope that somebody makes the leap to a wide receiver one or else I'm losing points at that position each and every week and hoping that I make up for it in the flex spot. Uh, So I'm not really a fan I don't think it's the worst team. I think it'll probably be competitive. And what you do get when you draft like this, robust running back or zero wide receiver, is you end up with these fourth and fifth guys. Like in my case, it's Jeremy Hill or Ryan Matthews. In your case, it would be Baldwin or Jones, motherfucker Jones. (laughs) And (laughs) uh, that could potentially be trade bait, right? So you have like a five-man field, and you're hoping that, I mean, you're hoping that none of them bust, but you're definitely hoping that you have three or four solid contributing members of your team, Yeah, and you, you'll have that depth where you could potentially go and make a trade. So if, if I get some return out of John Brown or Michael Crabtree, and then I could swing one of my running backs for another wide receiver, and then not only will I have a deep running back core, but I'll have potentially a chance at getting a wide receiver one through a trade later on through the season. So, I mean, you don't win the league through the draft, so this is kind of just a base, a foundation for you, and then Mm -hmm. you do with it what you will afterwards. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, That's sort of the one narrative that kind of gets unmentioned when when it talks about zero RB versus robust RB is what kind of trade equity are you left with? Um, Because I'm kind of of the mind that trades are where you actually win your league. Um, Yeah. And just running backs are worth more in the trade market. There's no, there's no spinning that to act like a, a high end wide receiver is worth more than a high end running back. Cause there's just there's less high end running backs. Um, and so if one of your five guys, if enough of your five guys hit that you can afford to trade one, then you can get one of these high end wide receivers, and then you're in a winning position. Whereas the other way around, if looking at my team, um, let's say you know Antonio, Dez, and Alshon all hit. Um, and even like, you know, let's say we go crazy because, you know, supposedly zero RB is safer. So in theory, four of these five receivers are hitting. So let's say even like Doug hits and he's still returning that wide receiver one value also. And I decide I'm going to trade him. Um, I'm not going to get an RB one for him, you know, at least not a, uh, maybe I can get a low end RB one, but probably not. Um, and that is, that's sort of the thing that makes me the most scared about, Zero RB is, you know, how do you trade to make this team better? Because your receivers just aren't worth as much as a running back. Yeah, no, I I definitely agree there. I mean, we've mentioned this before. We're not really huge proponents of any zero strategy. Yeah. But it is workable. I mean, I think any draft strategy is workable. So I don't, this this whole argument that, oh, zero running back is the way to go, zero wide receiver is the way to go, it will all be different narrative next season. Mm -hmm. If this season the top, five or ten running backs off the board if they all hit then the whole zero running back strategy will probably fade in the wind yeah and next season it will be some sort of new hybrid strategy or or maybe there'll be a few guys still you know preaching the zero running back and they'll be i mean it's the same stuff every single season so it's basically just you go out you get your guys you give 110 percent and you win your league all the guys out there, and it was a real team effort. Everyone going on in ten percent. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think this is a good place to to wrap this up. Zero RB. Yeah, yeah. We did. We didn't RB. get a chance to talk about a lot of the news that kind mm-hmm. of has been breaking in the fantasy landscape. But I think we can go ahead and just do another video. Yeah. To break it out for you guys. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for all of your comments, your your tweets, your twats, tweets and twats, uh, tweets and twats. <laughs> there it is. Uh, thank you to Fantasy Football Calculator for yes. uh, giving us this wonderful platform. Mm-hmm. Thank you to Bleacher Breaker. Thank you to Leo Colisi, yes. my uh, wonderful co-host. Thank you to me, indeed. And no thank you necessary to Derek. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no need. Uh, the follow, champ. follow us on Twitter. Uh, you can see it here, a little graphic, just bench-ff, same for Facebook. 
subscribe, comment, like on YouTubes. And uh, yeah, we will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.